Greetings and welcome to part one of the video series on ethics and professional practice. Of course, this video series is for preparing for the fundamentals of engineering exam. In this part, we are going to talk about the basics of engineering ethics and this topic areas coverage in the FE exam. So, what is engineering ethics? For sure, it's not science. Rather, it is a social contract which deals with moral issues and decisions confronting individuals and organizations involved in engineering practice. And it also addresses questions about moral conduct, character, ideals, and relationships of peoples and organizations involved in technical development as well as engineering practice. Let me ask you this. Generally speaking, do we really need a formal code of ethics? Do people behave unethically without a code of ethics? Does a code of ethics prevent people from behaving unethically? What would you say? I would say, yes, we do need a formal code of ethics. And no to this overgeneralization where if people are going to behave unethically without the code of ethics. No, I don't think so. And will a code of ethics prevent from people from behaving unethically? Absolutely not. Here's another general question. If corporations are people, as the U.S. Supreme Court said, mind you, I'm not getting into the nuances of that very particular decision, but if corporations are people, can the Code of Ethics meant for individuals be also applied to corporations? And here I would say, yes and no. Yes and no. The answer will be, it depends. Let's put ethics in perspective. By perspective, I mean, what happens? What will be the consequences of failure in ethics? Uh, not necessarily for engineering alone. Uh, let's talk about some of the high-profile ethics failures first. Meet Enron. Enron was one of the Fortune magazine's 100 best companies to work for in 2001. What happened five years later is Enron Corporation has become one of the textbook cases for massive ethical failure. Of course, not to mention being branded a criminal entity. Enron CEO has become one of the most disgraced corporate CEOs and a poster man for greed and corruption. Not only that, Enron's demise also brought down another firm. And that firm is Enron's auditor, Anderson Consulting. Courts found that Anderson is criminally negligent the liability resulting from that negligence brought the downfall of Anderson, which was one of the six biggest accounting firms in the world at that time. The funny thing is, all this happened while Enron had a documented, well-documented code of ethics as of July 2000. This document, you can find it on the web, and it will be fascinating to take a look at what their code of ethics reads like. And then there is this massive ethical failures at banks, insurance companies, and Wall Street in 2008, which brought in worldwide financial crisis, major catastrophic financial crisis. Though there are barely anybody who went to jail seven years after this financial crisis unfolded, the crisis itself is also seen as a result of major ethical failures at these banks, financial firms, insurance companies, and other Wall Street firms. It led to loss of a few lives, mainly due to suicides, but the major fallout from the crisis are loss of more than 8 million jobs and massive destruction of wealth, loss of public trust in institutions responsible for the crisis and the overall system of governance. In cases of Enron, 
and the 2008 financial crisis ethical failures led to massive financial losses imagine a case of failure in engineering ethics in design and construction of a tall building or a bridge which then leads to a complete failure of these structures when the building is on is full of people or the bridge is loaded with bumper to bumper traffic forget financial losses it could lead to catastrophic losses of lives isn't it all because an engineer or a group of engineers behaved unethically that's why ethics is so critical in engineering practice of course in this example we are talking about civil engineering practice you can also give similar examples you know for other disciplines of engineering now that you understand the importance of engineering ethics let's uh, talk a little bit about the subject area ethics in the fe exam itself you should know by now that the computer based test was introduced in 2014 it is 6 hours long where you answer 120 questions all of which have equal weight and these questions come from 14 to 18 knowledge areas depending on the discipline you are taking the exam in no matter which discipline you are taking the fe exam in ethics and professional practice is a common subject area in all these disciplines and the number of questions in ethics depending on the discipline you are in it they range from 2 to 8 and of course not all disciplines have the same weightage for ethics as you can see here chemical engineering has the lowest weightage for ethics subject area which is 2 to 3 and environmental and industrial have highest 5 to 8 i don't think that this variation is an indication on the relative importance of ethics in each discipline these weights are set by professionals of each discipline who are responsible for uh, choosing the weights of various subject areas within their discipline and they're done independently of each other in other words a group of civil engineers who set the questions are the importance for fe subject areas they work independently of you know a group of mechanical engineers who do the same so that's why you see for civil for 4 to 6 where for mechanical you will see 3 to 5 and that's the idea so what type of questions are we going to see mostly straightforward questions the questions will test your knowledge on the fundamental nature of ethics guidelines of course most questions and situations can be answered with common sense you can eliminate some answers because they will be so obviously wrong or should i say unethical but you will see questions on some real or fictional cases involving ethics violations which will test your ability to resolve the case in a manner that conforms to the code of ethics and or the guidelines these questions can be tricky so tricky that you won't be able to decide between well you can probably eliminate two choices but you won't be able to decide between two choices because both of them look right a gray area if you will we hope this is where watching these videos will help you so what's going to be your exam strategy believe it or not most fe exam takers who fail fail by giving only a handful of incorrect responses it's my opinion it's informed opinion of course it's my opinion that if only four or five incorrect answers turn out to be correct which would mean a 8 to 10 point swing it can make all the difference between pass and fail in the overall exam so your preparation should be so focused that you can answer 10 more questions than you are otherwise able to do to achieve this objective what we recommend as a general exam strategy is spend a little bit more time on easier sections and ask them ethics is one such section an easy section and you must must 
is this section and that should be your exam strategy how do these videos going to help you the videos in these videos we are going to cover the fundamentals of each topic area that are given in the civil engineering discipline fe civil engineering discipline that's not to say that it is not going to be applicable to other fe disciplines but the coverage is more civil specific whether it is a fundamental a topical coverage or an example and the focus is going to be on resolving ethical dilemmas that are uh, presented to you in the FE exam so what are the exam topics of course as i said earlier these exam topics are for civil engineering the first topic is codes of ethics and professional and technical societies professional liability licensure sustainability and sustainable design sustainability is not a new concept but it, but in the recent year it has taken prominence in engineering practice i am a bit surprised to see this topic in uh, this topic in ethics perhaps it is included in ethics because the concept is common to many disciplines it's just a guess professional skills professional skills are not static we all know that technology is always evolving and tools of trades are constantly changing engineers must know about the expectations related to adapting their professional skills to changing times changing technology and that's why this topic is included and finally contracts and contract law why is this topic important engineers will sign many documents in their professional line of business that's why it's important to know some of the basics of case law and contract law these topics touch some of the very important issues engineers face on a day to day basis some engineering programs across the country include a one to three credit course on these topics and incorporate the course into their curriculum it is more common for programs to incorporate one or two sessions on ethics as a part of a larger course usually in the first or second year of the program well we are not going to be that course this is a good time to remind you that the focus of this video series is not as a course on ethics rather it is a review on ethics aimed at helping you prepare for the fe exam This marks the end of part 1 of the video and thanks for watching